With the race to build the first commercial hypersonic aircraft, Destinus has revealed a 25-passenger Mach 5 variant, which is more than twice the speed as the Concorde. This means that it can make a flight from Paris to New York in about one and a half hours. The project has definitely progressed from just being a concept, and the company has revealed some interesting prototypes. Yet, it still leaves a lot of questions on whether or not this aircraft is actually feasible. It would require a highly reliable hybrid engine, along with a pretty redundant airframe. On top of that, even if it was financially feasible, it would still have sonic boom limitations. If you think this aircraft looks like something similar, well, you are very well correct. And it's very reminiscent of the X-51 Wave Rider tested in 2010. It improves its supersonic lift to drag by utilizing shock waves, otherwise known as a compression lift. It also utilizes a scramjet engine, and this allows it to obtain Mach 5 speeds. This type of engine relies on velocity to compress the incoming air forcefully before combustion. The advantage to a scramjet is that it's utilizing very little fuel, about 50 to 1 air to fuel combustion ratio. It has a weight advantage over rocket engines because it does not need to carry its own oxidizer, but it also has the same inherent problem of throttle control. So this engine could be utilized in a hypersonic missile, but if you want something like a reusable drone or even a passenger variant, well, you would need some sort of hybrid turbine system, which can start from the runway reach Mach 5 and then land safely. Obtaining hypersonic or Mach 5 speeds is also very problematic for a turbine-based system. And this is because of just simply how the incoming air is acting. As the aircraft exceeds its speed of sound, it generates a shockwave containing air that is hotter, denser, and higher in pressure than the surrounding air. So something coming into the compressor would basically melt the blades and obliterate it into a million pieces. And even if you could find a perfect alloy that can handle this temperature, well, you would start losing efficiency at around Mach 2. Only a few aircraft utilize a turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system, including the SR-71. It contained a J-50A turbine along with a bypass ramjet system, and this allowed it to reach Mach 3 speeds with an all-titanium aircraft frame. However, reaching a speed that's even faster than that at Mach 5 is very challenging in a TBCC system. There are two critical technologies that will give us the key to access these higher speeds. One of them is computational fluid dynamics and modeling so that we can project how the aircraft is going to perform in these higher speeds. But there are also, as you know in rocketry, new alloys being created all the time. And this could lead to a better airframe or even more redundant engine design. There'd also be an equation involving altitude, scramjet efficiency, and overall temperature of the airframe. And this would definitely be calculated into what is optimal for the aircraft to perform Mach 5 speeds. Luckily, there are some other parallel projects that can shed light on how this type of aircraft can perform. Hermes has already made several prototypes of an air-breathing engine that combines a turbine with a ramjet. Utilizing an F-100, they plan on exceeding Mach 2.5 with the goal of obtaining Mach 4 on the quarter horse Mark 3. Reaction engines also revealed a very unique pre-cooler which can cool air from over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit in less than 1 20th of a second. Coolant is fed through thousands of thin-walled tubes at very high pressure. However, the system would need to be cryogenic and there would need to be further engineering to incorporate such a system in the aircraft. This revolves back to the Destinus Part 2 design because they do intend to use cryogenic hydrogen for cooling, not just for the air intake, but for the leading frame edges as well. And this might not seem as far-fetched as it seems because big players like Rolls-Royce and General Electric are already experimenting with hydrogen jet engines. So it would be kind of icing on the cake, so to speak, if it can use hydrogen for cooling as well. It would still have to have some sort of TBCC system which can bypass the air from the turbine. It would effectively use hydrogen as a dual fuel source. The claim is, is that if you can use it for both the turbine and cooling system, this would allow for a higher range. A 25 passenger range could reach 10,000 kilometers or 6,200 miles, which exceeds the 4,500 mile range set by the Concorde. If you can do this, then you can have longer bypass routes over water or desert to avoid populated areas with the sonic boom. 90% of the largest airports are very close to the coast, so it could be possible. 
Just like the Hermes Quarter Horse, they will intend to make a sizable unit with a 60-foot wingspan at 1.8 tons, with the ultimate goal of building the passenger variant by 2030. And they are experimenting with hydrogen afterburners in demo craft. So in conclusion, the Destinus is a very unique aircraft that utilizes hydrogen as a fuel source and for cooling, and that's a really good idea, but I think it might be hindered by the sonic boom audible level. Now we know that scramjets can go to 240,000 feet, but the problem is, is that the higher it goes, it would lower the sonic boom audible level, but it would also lack efficiency in the scramjet. There is a diminishing return. So, th so there's some sort of balance equation involved with all that. The company stating that it has longer range and it can go around areas and make the sonic boom over ocean. That might be possible, but we'll just have to wait and see about that one. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.